Hello everybody, this is Mike History 2 and I will finally finish this Top 10 Worst People in History series by talking about Adolf Hitler in World War II. So on September 1st, 1939, Germany invaded Western Poland under the pretext of having been denied claims to Danzig and the right to roads across the Polish corridor, which Germany had given under the Versailles Treaty. In response, the United Kingdom and France declared war on Germany on September 3rd, surprising Hitler. Uh, France and the UK did not act on the declarations immediately, and on September 17th, Soviet forces invaded eastern Poland. The fall of Poland was followed by the phony war. Hitler instructed the two newly appointed party leaders of northwestern Poland, Albert, Albert Forster of Reichsgau Danzig West Prussia, and Arthur Greiser of Reichsgau Warteland, to Germanize their areas, with no questions asked about how this would be accomplished. In Forster's area, ethnic Poles merely had to sign forms stating that they had German blood. However, Greiser agreed with Hitler and carried out ethnic cleansing campaign towards Poles. Greiser soon complained that Forster was allowing thousands of Poles to be accepted as racial Germans and thus endangered German racial purity. Another dispute pitched one side represented by Heinrich Himmler and Greiser, who championed the ethnic cleansing in Poland against another represented by Goering and Hans Frank the governor-general of occupied Poland, who called for turning Poland into the granary of Germany. On February 12, 1940, the dispute was initially settled in favor of the Goering frank view, which ended the economically disruptive mass expulsions. On May 15, 1940, Hitler issued a memo entitled Some Thoughts on the Treatment of Alien Populations in the East, calling for the expulsion of the entire Jewish population of Europe into Africa and the reduction of the Polish population to a leaderless class of laborers. Hitler called Himmler's memo good and correct, and ignoring Goering and Frank implemented the Himmler-Greiser policy in Poland. On April 9th, Germany invaded Denmark and Norway. In May 1940, Germany attacked France and conquered Luxembourg, the Netherlands, and Belgium. These victories prompted Mussolini to have Italy join forces with Hitler on June 10th. France and Germany signed an armistice on June 22nd. The United Kingdom, whose troops were forced to evacuate France by sea from Dunkirk, continued to fight in the Battle of the Atlantic. Hitler made peace overtures to the new British leader, Winston Churchill, and upon the rejection, he ordered a series of aerial attacks on the Royal Air Force air bases and radar stations in southeast England. September 7th, the systematic nightly bombing of London began. The German Luftwaffe failed to defeat the Royal Air Force in what became known as the Battle of Britain. By the end of September, Hitler realized that air superiority for the invasion of, of Britain could not be achieved and ordered the operation to be post postponed. The nightly air raids on British cities intensified and continued for months. On September 27, 1940, the Tripartite Pact was signed in Berlin by Saburo Kurusu of Japan, Hitler, and Italian Foreign Minister Chano, and later expanded to include Hungary, Romania, and Bulgaria, thus yielding the Axis powers. Hitler's attempt to integrate the Soviet Union into the anti-British bloc failed after inconclusive talks between Hitler and Molotov in Berlin in November, and he ordered preparations for the invasion of the Soviet Union. In early 1941, German forces were deployed to North Africa, the Balkans, and the Middle East. In February, German forces arrived in Libya to bolster the Italian presence. In April, Hitler launched the invasion of Yugoslavia, quickly followed by the invasion of Greece. In May, German forces were sent to support Iraqi rebel forces fighting against the British and to invade Crete. On June 22, 1941, Hitler betrayed the non-aggression pact of 1939, and four to five million Axis troops invaded the Soviet Union. This offensive, Operation Barbarossa, was intended to destroy the Soviet Union and seize its natural resources. The invasion conquered a huge area, including the Baltic Republics, Belarus, and West Ukraine. By early August, Axis troops had advanced 500 kilometers and won the Battle of Smolensk. Hitler ordered Army Group Center to temporarily halt its advance to Moscow and divert its tanks to aid in the encirclement of Leningrad and Kiev. His generals disagreed with this change, having advanced within 400 kilometers of Moscow, and his decision caused a crisis among the military leadership. This pause provided the Red Army with an opportunity to mobilize fresh reserves, which was one of the major factors that caused the failure of the Moscow Offensive, which was resumed in October 1941 and ended disastrously in December. On December 7, 1941, Japan attacked the American fleet based at Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. Four days later, Hitler declared war against the United States. On December 18, 1941, Hitler asked Hitler what to do with the Jews of Russia, to which Hitler said, exterminate all of them as partisans. 
In late 1942, German forces were defeated in the Second Battle of El Alamein, stopping Hitler's plans to seize the Suez Canal and the Middle East. Overconfident in his own military expertise following the earlier victories in 1940, Hitler became distrustful of his army high command and began to interfere in military and tactical planning with damaging consequences. In December 1942 and January 1943, Hitler's repeated refusal to allow their withdrawal at the Battle of Stalingrad led to the almost total destruction of the 6th Army. Over 200,000 Axis soldiers were killed and 235,000 were taken prisoner. Thereafter came a decisive strategic defeat at the Battle of Kursk. Hitler's military judgment became increasingly crazy and Germany's military and economic position worsened as did Hitler's health. Following the Allied invasion of Sicily in 1943, Mussolini was removed from power by Victor Emmanuel III after a vote of no confidence of the Grand Council. Marshal Pietro Badoglio, placed in charge of the government, soon surrendered to the Allies. Throughout 1943 and 1944, the Soviet Union steadily forced Hitler's armies into retreat along the Eastern Front. On June 6, 1944, the Western Allied armies landed in northern France in one of the largest amphibious operations in history, Operation Overlord. Many German officers concluded that defeat was inevitable and that continuing under Hitler's leadership would result in the complete destruction of the country. Between 1939 and 1945, there were many plans to assassinate Hitler. The most well-known, the July 20th plot of 1944, came from within Germany and was at least partly driven by the increasing prospect of a German defeat in the war. Part of Operation Valkyrie, the plot involved Klaus von Stauffenberg planting a bomb in one of Hitler's headquarters, the Wolf's Lair at Rastenburg. Hitler narrowly survived because Staff Officer Heinz Brandt moved the briefcase containing the bomb behind a leg of the heavy conference table, which deflected much of the blast. Later, Hitler ordered savage reprisals, resulting in the execution of more than 4,900 people. By late 1944, both the Soviet Army and the Western Allies were advancing into Germany. Recognizing the strength and determination of the Soviet army, Hitler decided to use his remaining mobile reserves against the American and British troops, which he perceived as far weaker. On December 16, he launched the Ardennes Offensive to incite disunity among the Western Allies and perhaps convince them to join his fight against the Soviets. The offensive failed after some temporary successes. Acting on his view that Germany's military failures meant it had forfeited its right to survive as a nation, Hitler ordered the destruction of all German industrial infrastructure before it could fall into the hands of the Allies. Minister for Armaments Albert Speer was entrusted with executing the scorched earth policy, but he secretly disobeyed the order. Hitler's hope to negotiate peace with the United States and the United Kingdom was encouraged by the death of American President Franklin D. Roosevelt on April 12, 1945, but against his expectations, this caused no division among the Allies. On April 20th, his 56th birthday, Hitler made his last trip from the Fuhrer bunker to the surface. In the ruined garden of the Reich Chancellery, he awarded iron crosses to boy soldiers of the Hitler Youth, who were now fighting the Soviet army at the front near Berlin. On April 21st, Georgi Zhukov's first Belarusian front had broken through the defenses of General Gotthard Heinrichs' army group Vistula during the Battle of the Silo Heights and advanced to the outskirts of Berlin. Refusing to accept the bad situation, Hitler placed his hopes on the undermanned and under-equipped Army Detachment Steiner, commanded by General Felix Steiner. Hitler ordered Steiner to attack the northern flank of the salient, while the German 9th Army was ordered to flank to attack northward in a pincer attack. By April 23rd, the Soviet Army had surrounded Berlin and Goebbels made a proclamation urging its citizens to defend the city. The same day, Goering sent a telegram from Berchtesgaden, arguing that since Hitler was isolated in Berlin, Goering should become the leader of Germany. Goering sent a deadline after which he would consider Hitler incapacitated. Hitler responded by having Goering arrested, and his last will and testament of April 29th, he removed him from all government positions. On April 20th, Hitler discovered that Himmler, who had left Berlin on April 20th, was trying to negotiate a surrender to the Western Allies. He ordered Himmler's arrest and had Hermann Fegelein, Himmler's SS representative at Hitler's headquarters in Berlin, shot. After midnight on April 29th, Hitler married Eva Braun in a small civil ceremony in the Fuhrer bunker. Later that afternoon, Hitler was informed of the execution of Mussolini, which presumably increased his determination to avoid capture. On April 30th, 1945, when Soviet troops were within a block or two of the Reich Chancellery, Hitler shot himself in the head. 
and Braun bit into a cyanide capsule. Their bodies were carried outside to the garden behind the Reich Chancellery, where they were placed in a bomb crater, doused with petrol, and set on fire as the Soviet army shelling continued. Grand Admiral Karl Dönitz and Joseph Goebbels assumed Hitler's roles as head of state and chancellor, respectively. Now we all know what happened after that. Of course, Germany lost, and the rest is history. Now, the reason I didn't talk about the Holocaust is, one, everyone knows about it, and two, this video was getting too long. Now, that doesn't mean I don't think the Holocaust wasn't important or, or it wasn't bad, but, you know, I've already made three videos about Hitler. Anyways, Hitler caused the death of between 50 and 100 million people by starting World War II, and this includes the Holocaust, which was the bloodiest atrocity in all of human history. More people died in this war than in any other war ever, which is why I put Hitler as number one and not Stalin or Mao or all the other guys you keep telling me, no, they should have been number one. I put Hitler number one because he started World War II. Um, so, uh, yeah. But one more thing before you guys all leave, if anyone's even paying attention now. We will be giving some honorable, or maybe since they murdered so many people, dishonorable mentions. And so now we will do uh, the 20th to 11th worst person. So at number 20, we have Mohammed Ahmad, the Mahdi of Sudan between 1881 and 1885, who started the Mahdist war that, killed, that caused between 5 and 6 million people to die. 19, the Honghu Emperor, the Emperor of China, between 1368 and 1398, who started the Red Turban Rebellion that resulted in the deaths of 7.5 million people. 18, we have Jindrich Matthias Thurn, who caused the Thirty Years' War that caused 8 million people to die. Number 17, Chen Chishi, yeah, the guy who was fighting Mao in the Civil War, and he was the chairman of the National Government of China between 1928 and 1931, and 1943 and 1948, the premier of China between 1938 in 1931, 1935 and 1938, 1939 and 1945, and in 1947, the president of China between 1948 and 1949, and the president of Taiwan from 1949 to 1975, and he was the guy who started the Chinese Civil War that caused 9.5 million people to die. 16. Vladimir Lenin, the chairman of the Council of People's Commissars of Russia between 1917 and 1922, and the chairman of the Council of People's Commissars of the Soviet Union between 1922 and 1924. He was the guy who caused the Russian Civil War that caused between 7 and 12 million people to die. Number 15, Leopold II of Belgium, the king of the Belgians, be Belgians between 1865 and 1909, who killed between 1 and 20 million people in the Congo. Number 14, Wang Mang, the emperor of China between 9 and 23, who killed 10 million people. Uh, number 13, the Kangxi Emperor, the Emperor of China, uh, who continued Gordon's war uh, against the Southern Ming that caused 10, Dorgan's war, sorry, against the Southern Ming that caused 10 million people to die. Number 12, John Cartier, the Governor of Bengal in the United Kingdom between 1769 and 1772, who caused the Great Bengal Famine that caused 10 million people to starve to death. And number 11, Warren Hastings, who caused the Chalisa Famine of 1783 to 1784 that resulted in the deaths and starvation of 11 million people. So, now, last, last thing. Do you agree with this list? Who do you think was the worst person ever? I will put a survey right here in the top right corner so you can vote for who you think. Now, if you disagree, write in the comments, but don't just say I'm wrong. Actually, like, provide a reason. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this series. I certainly did. I'll see you next time.